This woman has essentially been bookended from either side by fear and guilt, and the vast spectrum that exists between them. And as my sense of self and feminist consciousness evolved, I began to understand how those two forces have shaped my interactions with the world around me. Let me give you an example. Two weeks ago, it was the anniversary of, of a revolution. Yeah. Huh? Two weeks ago, <laughs> it was the anniversary of a revolution. It's that big, see, I can't say it. <laughs> it was um, one that I didn't take part in. Millions of people were taken to the streets doing things I didn't think were possible. I was a jaded 22-year-old with a politics degree and a firm belief that I did not belong to any one country. And therefore, no country was worth my labor or putting myself in harm's way. And I knew just how much harm could be done to women out in the streets. Organized, orchestrated, gender <laughs> violence of the worst kind. And what cause in the world was possibly worth risking so much for? It's been eight years since then, and I've been trying to work my way back towards understanding who that young woman was, why she made those choices, and how much of it really was her choice. And I keep coming back to those two powerful driving forces, fear and guilt. Realizing in retrospect that my decision to not participate in the single most earth-shattering event of my country's recent history was in fact gendered truly fucked me up. I knew it then, but I understand it better now that it's an inherent <coughs> understanding that my beliefs, my voice, my politics will always be on the other side of bodily harm sprinkled with some family disappointment and social isolation. All I'm left with now is the guilt for not taking a stand, and even worse, for not caring. When all you want to do is keep yourself safe mentally and physically, there's no room left in your mind for the others. And so we, as women, as people, we lose each other. In that sense, the system has succeeded. The forces at home and in the street colluded to cloud my thoughts, tricking me into feeling a false sense of agency. So I can no longer separate the two. The home and the streets are one, the battle is the same. And the truth is I no, long, no longer need to be threatened with violence to fear it. It's a part of my fabric. That's a hard thing to swallow as a strong, independent feminist. It's the price you pay for being a woman. So I adapt the fear to my advantage make it work for my survival and not my paralysis, and when the guilt comes, I will unlearn it and let it teach me other, far more valuable lessons. That my gender is political, my feminism is political, I am political, and if I'm not, then I might as well be dead.